story recapped here. Today I'm gonna explain a fantasy, thriller, and horror film called The Hole. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. A single mother named Susan decides to move from Brooklyn to Bensonville with her two sons, 17-year-old Dane and 10-year-old Lucas. However, Dane is not happy with his mom's decision, especially because he had to leave his old life and friends behind. Unfortunately, there's nothing he can do about it, and Susan wishes he'd help her make things work. Moments later, Dane scares Lucas with a clown mask while moving their stuff to the house. Lucas is terrified of clowns, so he quickly tells on his brother. In Dane's defense, he's just trying to help Lucas with his phobia, but Susan tells him to stop embarrassing themselves in front of their new neighbor, Julie. Meanwhile, Lucas takes a box to the basement, where he hears strange sounds. Scared, Lucas flees and runs into one of their movers, who asks if he's okay. That night, Dane watches Julie from his bedroom window while she's having fun with her friends at a pool party in her house. At the same time, he draws an image of her, but his mood changes when he sees her playing with a guy. The next day, Susan goes to to work and reminds her sons not to cause trouble. Then, Lucas asks Dane to play with him, but he's too busy watching Julie from his room. So Lucas goes out and befriends Julie, making sure she'll see Dane from the window. Annoyed, Dane follows Lucas to the backyard, and the young boy immediately tries to run away from his brother. The two then end up in the basement, where they accidentally discover a locked trap door. Curious, Dane tries and fails to use a bolt cutter to open one of the trap door's locks. Luckily, they find the keys inside a paint can, and Dane immediately unlocks the trap door. Then, they find a hole upon opening it, and they're not sure sure how deep it is, so Lucas grabs a flashlight and some nails, unable to see the scratches on the door. It isn't long before Lucas drops the nails into the hole, but they don't hear them reach the bottom. Because they didn't hear a sound, Dane thinks the hole is some kind of a tunnel. On the other hand, Lucas attaches the flashlight to a small toy before lowering it down into the hole using a rope. However, the light instantly vanishes, and Lucas soon struggles to pull the toy up, so Dane helps him pull the rope, but the toy is already gone. Meanwhile, Julie arrives and joins the two in looking at the hole. Then, Julie's dog Charlie shows up and angrily barks at the hole, evident that he doesn't like it. Julie thinks it's just a crawl space, but when Lucas drops a paint can into it and doesn't make a sound, they decide to lower it down using a fishing rod. However, they soon reach the end of the line, and they still don't hear a sound. Eventually, Dane lowers a video camera into the hole. On the other hand, Julie thinks it's just a deep hole that the previous owner, Creepy Carl, dug up. A few minutes later, Dane closes the trap door and returns with Lucas and Julie to their house, where they watch the footage he recorded. However, all they see is some sort of light coming through a crack in the wall, but they can't be sure. Moments later, Susan arrives and asks the kids what they're doing, and and they all fail to see the eye looking through the camera. Dane then turns off the television and introduces Julie to his mom, and the girl soon leaves after that. At the same time, Dane stops Lucas from telling Susan about the hole, thinking they should just keep it a secret. That night, something forces the trap door open. Then Lucas goes to Dane's room after hearing it, but his older brother just ignores him. Meanwhile, the power in Julie's room suddenly goes out, and she looks under the bed when she hears someone whispering. However, the power eventually comes back on, startling her. The following morning, Susan takes Lucas to school. On the other hand, Dane stays behind because his classes will start next week. Then Julie shows Dane around town, and Dane talks about his life in Brooklyn. After that, the two eat in a diner, where Dane notices Julie's necklace and asks if it's from her boyfriend. However, Julie assures him she has no boyfriend, and they continue talking about Dane's family. Later that day, Susan leaves Lucas alone in their house telling him that Dane will be home soon. Then Lucas finds a gesture puppet on his bed, so he takes it to Dane's room, thinking his older brother is responsible for it. At the same time, Lucas takes Dane's camera before leaving. Meanwhile, Julie hears a girl crying in the restroom, but the lights suddenly go out while she's checking on her. Julie also realizes the door is locked, so she starts shouting for help. Then, the girl in the stall comes out and slowly approaches Julie, but she vanishes when several students enter the ladies' room. Concurrently, Lucas goes to the basement and opens the trap door, but he gets distracted when he hears a sound. It isn't long before he finds the jester puppet winking at him, and it quickly moves to the stairs to block Lucas's path. Then, the puppet appears beside Lucas and throws bottles at him 
him while trying to flee. As if that isn't enough, the door suddenly closes, but Lucas eventually opens it. After that, Lucas watches as the puppet attempts to open the door, but it soon stops, and Dane finally arrives. Breathless, Lucas tells Dane about what happened, but his brother doesn't believe him and opens the basement door. At the same time, Lucas accuses Dane of putting the clown on his bed before it appeared in the basement, but Dane has no idea what he's talking about, so the two go down there to investigate, but they don't find the puppet anywhere. However, they see a little girl playing on the floor, the same kid Julie saw, and they soon realize her eyes are bleeding. Then, the brothers follow the girl when she goes upstairs, but she suddenly disappears. Moments later, Lucas asks Julie and her friends outside if they've seen a girl with blood dripping from her eyes, but Dane assures them his younger brother is just kidding and returns home with him. Then, Julie follows them and asks what's happening, but Dane refuses to tell her. However, they soon see the girl returning to the basement, and as they follow her, they witness her crawl into the hole. Despite being scared, Dane opens the trap door to search for the girl, but Lucas immediately closes it. Then, Dane, Lucas, and Julie eat some pizza while trying to figure out what the hole is. After a while, Susan finds them sleeping in the basement, and Dane almost hits his mom with his paint gun when she wakes them up. But despite that, Susan doesn't get mad and just tells them not to stay there much longer. Once Susan is gone, Dane prepares to lock the trap door, but they realize the padlocks are missing, so they just place the cooler on top of it before Julie leaves. Upstairs, Upstairs, Susan introduces her sons to her colleague Travis. However, it's obvious that Dane isn't thrilled that they have a visitor, and immediately goes to bed with Lucas after talking to Travis. On the other hand, Susan apologizes to Travis for Dane's behavior, saying her children's father isn't a nice person. But Travis is very understanding, telling Susan she doesn't have to explain to him. The next day, Julie goes to Dane's basement despite his protests. Then, he soon follows her with Lucas and sees the trap door open while the cooler is flipped sideways. So Julie closes the trap door, but as Dane tries to put the cooler back in place, a belt suddenly falls from it. Dane then seals the trap door with nails, and they soon decide to visit Creepy Carl at the glove factory. When they arrive at the factory, Dane finds a way to break inside. There, Julie tells him how they used to hear Creepy Carl scream from his house before finally disappearing and moving out there. Then, they finally reach Creepy Carl's place, which is full of lights. With no time to waste, Julie and Dane quickly introduced themselves to Creepy Carl, telling him they found the hole and took the locks off. Because of that, the old man gets upset and says the darkness will come for all of them, sending the trio running away. Once the kids are gone, Creepy Carl finds a sketchbook on the floor. Then, that evening, Susan tells her sons they'll have the house to themselves for a day or two, informing them she's got an offer to do some training in a hospital out of town. Susan says that'll help her earn more money, but Dane isn't happy because Travis is coming too. On the other hand, Lucas tries telling Susan about the hole, but Dane stops him again. Later that night, Susan talks to Dane as he's about to sleep, and the boy expresses his concern about his mom's relationship with Travis. However, Susan tells him not every man is his father, adding that they can't be scared forever. Meanwhile, in the basement, the nails sealing the trap door get removed one by one. Fun. Back at the factory, Creepy Carl draws in the sketchbook and shouts he's not done when the bulbs start blowing up. The next day, Dane realizes his sketchbook is missing and returns to Creepy Carl's place to retrieve it. However, when he finds it, he sees that most pages have been blacked out. He then returns home and informs Julie the old man is gone, so Julie suggests they do something else for the day. Moments later, they go to Julie's house to swim, and the brothers try their best to have fun. Unfortunately, Dane can't help but inspect his sketchbook, telling Lucas and Julie that one of the illustrations looks like a hand. However, Julie wants to forget about the hole for a while and encourages the brothers to swim with her. Then, when Dane finally jumps into the water, he sees a figure standing by the edge of the pool, which immediately vanishes. Still, Dane follows the shoe prints he sees on the ground, but Julie says they're probably just from her dad. Meanwhile, Lucas gets pulled underwater, so Dane and Julie immediately rescue him. Lucas cries as he tells them the puppet tried pulling him into the hole saying it wouldn't let go. After that, Dane takes Lucas back to their house and starts drawing in his sketchbook. Then, Julie calls him in the evening to check on Lucas, who's been asleep since they got home. Once he's done talking to Julie, Dane notices a bruise on Lucas' leg in the shape of a hand, so he checks his sketchbook and compares the bruise to one of the drawings before tearing out all the pages. Dane then arranges them to form a big picture, but he gets distracted when he hears someone whistling. 
curious? Dane looks around the house and sees a letter on the table from New Jersey State Penitentiary. Although he's scared, Dane opens the envelope and sees the words, Hello boy, in the letter. And he immediately knows who sent it to him. At the same time, a man suddenly shows up and wanders around the house, causing Dane to wake Lucas up. With a bat in hand, Dane searches for the intruder and leaves Lucas outside his room, but a cop soon arrives to check on them. The officer talks to Lucas and asks if he's the one who called, so the young boy says he thinks it's his brother. Then, the officer gives Lucas a picture of the little girl they saw the other day and says he's looking for her, saying he doesn't want her to get hurt. However, Lucas gets terrified when he sees a big hole in the back of the cop's head, showing his brain. Frightened, Lucas runs upstairs and hands Dane the picture before they both head to the basement. Unfortunately, they don't notice the tall man watching them in the dark. Once they get to the basement, they witness the cop crawl into the hole. Then Dane looks at the girl's photo and notices her necklace, which is similar to Julie's. Meanwhile, Julie wakes up when the little girl touches her necklace, but the kid quickly vanishes. However, the little girl reappears when Julie tries calling out to her dad, telling her he'll make them go to bed. Then, Dane Dane and Lucas show up outside Julie's house, and as Julie's about to jump out the window, the little girl asks her to save her. Upon leaving her room, Julie tells Dane and Lucas that the little girl's name is Annie Smith, revealing they used to be best friends. Julie confesses to letting her fall, and then she suddenly bolts, saying she knows what she has to do. On the other hand, Dane instructs Lucas to stay behind while he runs after Julie. Moments later, Julie reaches the amusement park and finds Annie in the same spot where she fell. Julie apologizes to Annie for what happened, but the little girl tries to take her down with her. Meanwhile, Dane rushes to help Julie, who's struggling to hold on to the wooden railing. Annie is mad at Julie for not doing anything to save her, adding that she just sat there and cried even when the policeman heard them and fell. So Julie explains that it's because she was scared, and after saying she's not afraid anymore, Annie finally lets her go. Meanwhile, the puppet lures Lucas into the basement by imitating Dane's voice. Then, it attacks Lucas until the boy falls down the stairs, and the clown eagerly throws random objects at him. So Lucas adjusts the speed of the exhaust fan and luckily destroys the puppet by ducking down when it tries to attack him again. Seconds later, Dane and Julie find Lucas in the basement, and they all head upstairs. There, Dane deduces that the hole brings someone's fear to life. Then, Lucas starts packing after Julie invites them to sleep in her house, and Julie reveals that Creepy Carl was always talking about the darkness. At the same time, Julie helps Dane put together the drawings from his sketchbook, showing a big man dragging a boy. At that moment, Dane realizes that Lucas is in trouble and rushes to his room, but a tall man has already taken his younger brother. Dane immediately assumes his dad took Lucas, so he decides to go down the hole. At the same time, he reveals his dad is in prison because he used to beat him up and Lucas, adding that Julie now knows what he's afraid of. Dane jumps down the hole seconds later using a rope, but the pipe it's attached to suddenly breaks. Then, Dane faces the monstrous form of his dad, but he manages to dodge his attack before searching for Lucas inside a twisted version of their old house. There, he finds Lucas hiding inside the closet, which he immediately locks with a large hanger. Soon, the boys hear their dad looking for them, so Dane assures Lucas he won't let anything happen to him. Then, the brothers try to escape using the tall shelf that leads to the basement, but their dad pulls Dane and throws him out of the closet. After that, Dane's dad mocks him for letting Lucas take the beating for him when they were younger, but Dane says that's not true and tries to attack the man. However, Dane's dad just hits him with his belt when he tells him he can't hurt him, and the two play a game of cat and mouse. Luckily, Dane avoids his dad and tells him he's not scared of him anymore, making him realize that saying that out loud makes the man weak. At the same time, Dane manages to take his dad's belt, which he uses to get on top of a ceiling fan. On the other hand, Dane's dad returns to his normal size and looks at him as he holds on to the edge of the crumbling floor. Then, Dane tells his dad he's nothing like him, before dropping the belt and causing him to fall. Eventually, Dane returns to the basement and finds Lucas there, relieved that he's okay. Lucas then closes the trap door just as Susan arrives, and she asks what they're doing. However, when Susan opens the trap door, all they find is a crawl space. So Dane closes the trap door again and leaves with Julie, Lucas, and Susan, talking about what they'll do for the night. Unfortunately, when Lucas asks their mom what she's afraid of, and she says she thought there was a monster under her bed when she was a little girl, the trap door suddenly reopens. In the post credit scene, the puppet can be seen winking. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.